Okay, welcome everybody. How's everybody enjoying the uh, WordCamp so far? Very good. Okay, I just wanted, before I start my talk, I just want to do a quick, because everybody's been sitting around all day, I just want to do a quick thing. This is a fun thing I like to do. Uh, what we've, I want to see how far people have come to WordCamp today, to Singapore. So what I want you to do is stand up, and what I want you to do is if you've come, like if you live in Singapore, you live close by, I want, to, want you to put your hands close together. And if you've come from a long distance, like from overseas, put your hands wide apart. So everybody stand up. Come on. I know. <laughs> so like this, straight out. And if you've come from a long way away, put your hands like that. If you're very close, put that. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, now I've got a good photo of my standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I get a lot of standing ovations that way. Okay, so let's get into my talk. Now, um, let's go into presenter mode, might be a bit better. You're seeing, half of, you're seeing all this magic. Uh, so, should be just there. There we go. Okay, so when I wrote this talk. This is the third time I've given this talk uh, and it evolves every time. Um, and the reason I wrote it is because I thought I was a bit unique in what my story with WordPress was. Um, but as I talk to people and you know you interact with a lot of people with the WordPress community, I found out that my story isn't unique. Everybody's story is unique and it's uh, everybody's got a really good story about how they got involved with WordPress and how it impacts their lives. Um, and for anybody who's uh, seen the articles from HeroPress, has anybody seen those? So uh, Topher de Rossi, uh, I met him firstly, he's a really great guy. He uh, has the HeroPress and he has articles from people on how WordPress has changed their lives. And it's really inspiring to see where people have come from and how much WordPress has made their lives better. But this is my story. Uh, and to tell my story, we've got to go back in time a little bit. So we're going back in time. Back to 2013. All the way back then. Now, the first time I gave this talk, it, w it wasn't so far back. Now it's getting further and further away. Uh, so back in 2013, I was working in a factory. Uh, there's me, a couple of mates, wearing the fluoro, driving forklifts, all that kind of stuff. Um, but they decided to shut down the factory. And I'd been working there for 20 years, and that's pretty much all I knew, apart from fixing computers on the side. And I taught myself a little bit of HTML, CSS. So I had to reinvent my career, so I started looking around for something to do. Um, so I decided to get into web design. Now, one of the things I was really keen on doing back in those days. I was a very avid gamer. Anybody here game, play games, computer games? Yep. Um, you know how much time you can waste on those. For those who've got kids who are playing computer games, you know what it's like. They're on there all the time. Well, I was really bad at it. I'd play for hours and hours on end. Uh, but I had to learn how to be a web developer, so I had to study. Uh, so I had to stop playing games. That was the first thing that changed, a big change in my life. Uh, I went from wasting six to eight hours a day playing computer games to actually learning about web design and that kind of stuff. So um, I then realised no one would probably employ me, so I had to start my own business. So I started a company called Data Guru, and I started building websites for customers. Now back then I was just doing everything in plain old HTML, CSS with Notepad++. Uh, and then I heard about this thing called a CMS. And I thought, hmm, this sounds like fun. So I did a lot of research, a lot of research. And of course, the two, three main open source uh, CMSs are WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. So I did a lot of research to find out which one was the best one. And then I thought, I'll pick that one and learn a lot about it. And of course, I picked. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> no, I picked WordPress. I did a lot of research and all the, the forums and all the research I did pointed to Word, WordPress being the best. And obviously, I mean, Joomla and, and you know, Drupal are very good, but 
as we know, WordPress now has, what, 34, 35% of the web. So it was a good choice. So I started learning about WordPress and uh, I found, I was going online and finding as much information as I could. There's lots of information out there, lots of videos. But one of the greatest resources I found was on, it, it was called lynda.com. I think people know it now as uh, LinkedIn Learning. Uh, but I went on there and I, uh, Morton Rand Hendrickson, so anybody who knows, like who lives in the WordPress world, has probably heard his name, he's very uh, vocal on accessibility and all sorts of things, but he's also a really good trainer for WordPress. So if anybody's out there starting out, highly recommend watching his videos. But that really changed how I did things. And so I was learning, at this point I was learning how to use WordPress. I hadn't actually used it yet. So does anybody remember this? The old manual install of WordPress. So the first time, this is my first time I decided to build out a WordPress site. And it was amazing. <laughs> okay, that, well, that wasn't it, but it wasn't far from that. But the thing was, what it used to take me a week or two with just plain text and HTML, CSS, I did in like four hours, my first attempt. And I had a, a five, six page website with images and a menu and everything was working and it was amazing. And I, I thought, this is great. But then there was a problem. This was the, the point that I nearly broke up with WordPress because I was looking for a business and I was looking for people to pay me to build websites. And because I'd built this site with really little training and not real, a lot of knowledge, uh, and I built it very quickly, I thought, who is going to pay me to build a WordPress site? So I kind of thought, well, this is a bit of a waste of time because you know, I'm not going to make any money out of it. But I talked to some people and they said, look, you really can make money out of building WordPress sites. So I started falling in love with WordPress. And it, as you all know, WordPress is amazing and people do pay for people to build WordPress sites, even though you can do it yourself. It's like, I, you know, I can basically fix a car, but I prefer to pay somebody else to do it or wash it. Then I started going to meetups. So I, I came back from a search. Oh, my phone's talking to me. <laughs> uh, so has anybody here go to a WordPress meetup? Or any kind of meetups. So I found the meetup by accident. I was searching for something about WordPress and came across a WordPress meetup and I thought this sounds interesting. So I went along and there was a lot of people there. A lot of people. Uh, and I'm not a real outgoing person, I'm very shy. Uh, so I went to the, the talk and I sat, I actually sat up the front but I sat by myself and then at the end of the meetup they, decide, they said, oh, we're all going to a pub, you know, to a bar and we're going to talk and you get to network and have fun. And, and I thought, I don't know if I want to do this. I'm not the kind of person who can just sort of meet people. I was very shy. So. But I did it and I went along, but I kind of felt a bit left out. Everybody was in their groups um, and I didn't really know anyone. It was hard to sort of uh, get to talk. I sort of wandered around and sort of, has anybody been in that situation? You're sort of wandering around and you don't know who to talk to and you kind of stand listening on a conversation and then you walk up somewhere else and listen on someone else's conversation. So I did that and didn't really get to know anyone. I felt kind of a bit left out, but I kept going. I kept going every month, I'd go to the meetup and I think people started feeling sorry for me or, you know. <laughs> But no, people started realising I was coming over and over again and they started talking to me and I made friends. And it was hard at first, because I, you know, for those people who are shy, it's hard to go out and meet people. Um, but I did it and those friends that I made back then are still really good friends now today and they're a big reason that I'm standing here right now. Um, and then these new friends told me about a WordCamp. Uh, now, I live in Brisbane and there was a word camp coming up in Sydney and I didn't know what to do. I've, I've never been to a conference before, never been to a word camp, but I saved up all my money and I flew down to Sydney and I went to my first word camp and that really changed my life. Who's here for the first time for a word camp? Yeah. Who's here, like, who's been to many, many word camps? Yeah. For those who put your hands up for the first time, expect to keep coming back. They're very addictive. 
So I went to my first WordCamp. Um, once again, I was very shy, I didn't know. I had a few people I knew, um, but yeah, I, I kind of, thing was I, I made some really good friends. I made like a really good friend on the first day. I met this guy waiting to uh, like uh, registered. We got talking and, and we end up sitting next to each other in just about every talk. And you make some really good friends, you make some good connections at WordCamps. And you'll learn a lot of cool stuff. Probably won't learn much in my talk, but in the other talks you'll learn some cool stuff. <laughs> um, but then I saw these people up talking and this is actually one of, one of the friends I'd made. This is Luke Carbus. And um, he was talking, but there's lots of other people talking. And I thought, you know what? One day I want to be up at a WordCamp and talk. That'd be really cool. Maybe four or five years down the track when I get some experience and I know what I'm talking about. I hope to be one of those people. Less than 12 months later, I was up talking at a WordCamp. Uh, they had one in Brisbane and one of the organizers said, you should talk. I said, well, I don't know, what, I've got nothing to talk about. He said, just pick a topic that you're good at or interested in or know something about. And he really encouraged me and uh, that, his name was Bronson Quick and he's a, a really good um, community member in, in Australia. And he really encouraged me and so I, I submitted a talk and I got accepted. Didn't get accepted till the very end, so I kept thinking I wasn't accepted. But in the end, they sent me an email and said, you can come along and talk. And so I went and did my first talk, it was on child themes. Um, and I was nervous and I didn't really know what I was talking about, but I did it and I had a really great time. Um, so I really encourage you, for those who are sitting out in the audience, think about when word camps and meetups are coming up, don't be afraid to stand up and talk. It's, it's a really good experience, even if you're shy. And then I saw all the people who were organising the WordCamp, and these are all my friends that I'd made in Brisbane and you know, with WordPress in general. And I saw them organising the WordCamp, and I said, you know what, in a couple of years' time, it'd be really good if I could organise a WordCamp. Less than 12 months later, I was organising my own WordCamp uh, with a whole heap of other people. It was WordCamp Sunshine Coast. And it was great, it was a great experience. It was, it's hectic and when you do one you wonder why you'd ever do one because it's it's very stressful and it's a lot of work but it's people keep doing it it's it's great fun so the thing is we're just normal people who organize word camps we're just volunteers and a lot of times it's you'll be sitting around at a coffee shop and go let's do a word camp and that's where it comes from and then it turns into something like this so here i was i was now drawn into word camps I was a speaker, I was an organiser, and also I was helping run a lot of the meetups. So when I'd started going to meetups, a lot of people had helped me, and I really appreciated all the help and the, and the friends I made, and I, I kept saying, how can I help? And, and when you go to meetups, they always say, if you want to help, you know, come and see us. And I thought, well, I don't know what I can do to help, but I kept saying, if there's anything I can do. And one of the meetup organisers said, oh, you can help me run it. Um, so I said, yeah, sure. And then he said, I'm going like overseas next month, you can run the whole meetup. So that was my first taste of running a meetup all by myself. Uh, but it was, then I started helping and got involved with a lot of other meetups. And it's really good to give back and to help the community and to um, you know, make these meetups happen. And there's, the, uh, there's a couple of people in WordPress Brisbane and Sunshine Coast, and we all have a good time learn stuff, have pizza, sometimes we have beer. And then I realised I was doing something. Something I had never done before. Networking. <laughs> Not that kind of networking. That kind of networking. Now, I've been working in a factory and you know, never had to do any of this kind of stuff. And I was going to these meetups and I didn't realise I was doing it. I was making friends, just having a good time. But I was actually networking, meeting people, building relationships. And I had that business I'd started, and I was teaching myself as I went. And my business started to grow because people knew me and they would refer work to me and get, you know, like, it was really great for my business. It wasn't what I set out to do, it was just a nice side effect. So that was really amazing. Then I got a really strange thing happen. I went to do a, a guy asked me to do a website for him 
I told him how much it would cost and he nearly fell off his chair. And he said, do you want to get fit? I said, actually I do. So we had a deal where I'd build him a website and he'd train me, like be my personal trainer. And I actually got really fit. And you notice there's something missing there, like a big belly. So um, that, was, that was really good. That was a long time ago. I've since fall on, fallen off the car uh, back to my fat self. But, but that was amazing. And then I, needed, I realised I needed some help for my business as well. So I'd been told about Troy Dean and WP Elevation for a long time and I finally bit the bullet and, and joined the WP Elevation uh, course. And that really changed the way my business... And look, look, I'm thin again there. <laughs> Amazing. But, uh, yeah, I did the course, and that really helped with my business once again. I had my business going really well, had all sorted out. And then I went to WordCamp Sydney 2016, and I gave this exact talk, how WordPress changed my life. And it was really good. I was fit, I was thin, my business was going good, and... The talk went really well. And that's where my talk ended, sort of, back in Sydney 2016. But I've given this talk a few more times, and there's more. I was very active with Brisbane. I was helping organise, I now co organise the WordCamp Brisbane uh, WordCamp, which is actually happening next weekend. Um, and I was working, oh, it's a very good photo. That's a friend of mine called Dion. Now, Dion actually is one of the lead developers for Automatic. For basically, he builds WordPress. Um, and I noticed him and a couple other people that I knew who were working for big companies like you know, Human Made and XWP and Automatic. And they were getting trips to WordCamp US, WordCamp Europe, WordCamp this, flying around the world for retreats. And I thought to myself, that's really cool. I wish I could do that. And I also heard about a job called a WordPress evangelist. I thought, that, that sounds like something I could do. So all my friends were going all to these word camps and getting paid to go. It wasn't like they had to dig into their own pocket. And I thought, I want to do that. And you can kind of see a bit of a trend going here. Whenever I sort of put my mind to something, it seems to happen whether I want it to or not. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to work for a company that would pay me to go to word camps and have fun. And out of the blue, WP Engine came along. So I was kind of doing the community thing and working my business and I was at a meetup and this guy came along and said, hey, would you like to work for WP Engine? I said, sure. I didn't think I'd get the job, but uh, I did. I, got, I started working for WP Engine. I shut down my business and I started working for them and I get to travel. I've, uh, since I've started with WP Engine, I've traveled to Texas, to Austin, Texas, to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, WordCamp Phoenix. Been to WordCamp Wellington, where I also tr tricked them into giving me a standing ovation. <laughs> uh, I've been to London. I've been to Limerick Island. This is uh, our Limerick team and London team. Um, and I've been to Singapore. And as well, I travel all around Australia and go to meetups and word camps. And this is, you know, like, this all came from, the main reason that's happening is because I was going to meetups, I was being active in the community, and I got noticed. And it was all because I started up off with WordPress. That, that one day when I looked into all those different CMSs and didn't choose Joomla, I chose... <laughs> But one last thing, I'm going to wrap it up really quickly because we are getting close to lunchtime. Well, one last thing. Of all those things, one of the coolest things, I started networking more. When I realised I was networking, I was looking for other opportunities back when I had my business. And I started going to other meetups, not just techie ones. And I went to one that was like a small business uh, meetup. And it was run by this lady over here called Sally Aberhart, who is now my partner. So through all, all this, WordPress even brought me love. <laughs> so that was really amazing. Because if I hadn't found WordPress, I wouldn't have gone to meetups, I wouldn't have started networking, and I wouldn't have met her. So in summary, WordPress has made me more confident. 
obviously I'm up here talking, I'm not shy anymore. Well, still shy, but um, I've made a lot of new friends and I'll, I've made so many cool new friends since I've just been in Singapore. Uh, I've achieved my goals, like I kind of set goals and I achieve them now. I got healthy, kind of. <laughs> uh, and I've got a job that I love. So this all adds up to WordPress is awesome. And that's it. Thank you, Singapore. Thank you so much, Ricky. Anyone has questions for Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us your name. <laughs> a little bit about you, Rosal Spring, and then uh, your question. I'm Carl from Bandian Systems. Yep. I'm curious, uh, do WP Engine also have uh, remote, remote work? Not they, we do have uh, a few remote people, but they're very few. We we tend we've got a really strong company culture, and we like to keep everybody in the office and and you know together and you know kind of keeping everybody happy and healthy and uh, and having a fun time. So we I mean as the company's evolving, there's probably going to be more uh, opportunities for remote work, and we had to have I think we've only got like 13 people out of 700 that work remotely at the moment. Are you looking for a job? <laughs> no worries. Anyone else? Okay, so um, we have a question there. Vicky, can you share about some networking tips since you enjoy it so much and you're obviously very good at it? Yeah, and actually my, uh, my partner, she actually wrote a book called uh, Networking for Introverts because we're both introverts um, and we like to we're a bit shy. <laughs> but um, one of the main things with networking, and this is a, a tip from my girlfriend, she, this is a really good tip. When you do go to an event, um, look for the person, there's other people in the room who are shy just like you, and you'll pick them out because they're standing by themselves in the corner. So look for those people and just go up and say hi. Because you're both shy, and you both need that person. And then once you've got two people, then it's a lot easier to go up to a third person. And before too long, you've got a little group. So that's a really good tip. And the other thing is just, um, especially with WordPress and the community, that everybody wants to be your friend, even though it doesn't feel like it at first. Um, don't be shy to, to walk up and introduce yourself and just start talking. The WordPress community is one of the most uh, accepting and most you know, giving communities I've ever been in. Uh, and if you are in the community and if you do, like if you regularly attend a meetup, and you, you know, you've got your little groups of friends. Um, when you do have a meetup, just look around for those people who are new and you know, standing by themselves and, and welcome them in and just say hello. Because you know, it really does make a big difference. Um, I think that how he found me yesterday, I was the shy one. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks so much. No more, no more. Everyone's excited to go for lunch? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you so much for your time. Um, you can go out for lunch now and come back for the next round of calls at 1.15. Yeah? <laughs>